Hi there, I'm Trevor and welcome to TH Training Painting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some more patches of rough ground. This being the third tutorial that I'm going to be working on. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make these areas of rough ground. The first piece will be this one here. And this is using the exact same techniques that I've shown in my first video, making rough ground part one. And it uses the exact same techniques, except I've now added some larger stones. And then these two pieces are using all the techniques I've demonstrated so far. And I introduce a new technique with these mounds made for some polystyrene. So all these pieces look really great and they're very easy to make and will hinder the movement of my models and all my war games. So if you haven't seen any of the previous videos on making rough ground, you can see them just here. And to begin, I'm going to go grab my tools, get myself a cup of tea and let's get to work. The tools and materials I'm going to be using are some sheets of material for the bases. I'll be using some 3mm hardboard, multi-purpose filler, PVA glue, polystyrene, a marker pen, a craft knife, some sanding blocks, stones, sand and small stones, some tweezers, flock, and of course some paint and some paint brushes. Before I start making my rough ground models, I'll need some bases. But I've already talked about how to make them in my previous rough ground videos. So I'm just going to fast forward through this piece. However, if you want to know how to make the bases, then please check out my rough ground part 1 or part 2 tutorials. This base of rough ground is made in the same way as I've previously shown in my rough ground part 1 video. So I'm not going to explain the whole construction process. I'm just going to highlight where this construction is different than the previous tutorial. The only difference is that I'm adding some larger stones to the base before adding the smaller stones and sand. The larger stones are roughly about 20 to 30 millimeters in size and for 28 millimeter scale games they will look like huge boulders that will hinder all my gaming models. Having constructed the base I'll seal it with my sealing mixture but I'll explain what that is later in the video as I want to show you another technique for making some areas of rough ground. Having made some bases as described in my previous rough ground videos, I'm good to go. On these bases, I'm going to create some mounds of uneven and broken ground that will hinder my models. And for that, I'm going to use some polystyrene sheets, from which I want to make thin slivers, as I don't want the mounds to be too big, just a couple of millimetres thick. The pieces I'm using are a couple of leftover scraps from another project, and they are absolutely perfect for this. The mounds are made in a similar fashion to the way I made my hills in one of my previous videos. With this piece, I'll grab my marker pen and draw out the shape of my mound. I'm going to have this area as a rocky face and this part of the mound will slope down. Then, grabbing my craft knife, I'll start shaving the polystyrene away to create the shape of my mound. Just like in the hills video, I can grab a sanding block and sand the polystyrene to create a smoother surface. And what I am making is actually a very small hill. The next thing I'll do is take my craft knife again and cut away chunks of the polystyrene and maybe add a few grooves into it to create the rock face on my mound. the piece cut and ready to be glued onto my base. I lay the piece onto the base to see where I'd like to put it and once I'm happy with it I'll grab a marker, draw around it to create a guideline for myself so I know where the piece will be glued onto. I'm just going to grab a few more pieces of polystyrene and create some more mounds for the rest of my bases. <music> all the mounds made. This base has only one mound on it but I'll be adding lots of stones to the base to create the rough ground. To attach the mounds to the base I'll use some PVA glue. Grabbing my glue and a paintbrush I'll add some glue to the bottom of my polystyrene mounds and press them onto the base. With the glue dry I can add some texture to the mounds to create my rock faces and for that I'm going to use some multi-purpose filler. 
I'll scoop out some filler onto my mound and then using a stiff bristle brush which I've dampened in some water, I'll work the filler around the polystyrene mound to create the rock face and also help blend the mound into the base. Hopefully you can see the texture I've added to my little rock face and I'll do the same thing with these other mounds. With the multi-purpose filler now dry, I can start adding some texture to the rest of my bases. And first, I'll grab some of these larger stones and with some PVI glue, I'll add them onto the bases. For these bases of rough ground, I'm also going to make some clumps of rock, just like I made for my rough ground part 2 video, which is simply some small stones mixed with some PVA glue. To start, I'm going to need something to mix into. I'm going to use this takeaway food container. I'll add some small stones into the container. Then add a small amount of PVA glue. It's better to add a little amount of glue when doing this than adding too much. Remember, I can always add more glue if I need to. Then mix it all together. I'm using the glue spreader to do this, but you can use whatever tool you have. And remember to clean the tool when you're finished. I'm looking to have all the stones coated in a thin layer of the glue, and hopefully you can see that the stones are beginning to stick together. With all the stones coated, I'll grab the base, then I'll just move them around to create clumps of rock. And when I'm happy with the look of my clumps of rock, I'll just leave them all to dry. With the clumps now dry, I'm going to add some more texture to the base, and just like the previous videos, I'm going to glue on some small stones and sand. So, Grabbing my container of glue and a paintbrush, I'll paint the glue onto the bases. Taking my big box of stones, I'll set the bases in the lid. Grab a handful of stones and scatter them all over the base. My box here is a mix of decorative stones that I've bought throughout the years, mostly obtained from local discount stores, and the stones are quite small, no more than maybe 10 millimeters in length. I'll shake off the excess stones, then I'll do the same thing with some kiln dried sand, which I'll adhere to the glue, which doesn't have any of the stones attached to it. That's all the stones and sand added to my base, I'll just leave this all to dry. And now I'm going to do the same thing with this base. The next thing I want to do is to seal the bases with this sealant mixture that I've made. The mixture is a equal parts multi-purpose filler, PVA glue and water, which I just paint onto the bases using an inexpensive paintbrush. The sealant helps the stones and sand adhere to the base and also increases the durability of the model, so bits won't hopefully fall off when I'm gaming. With some paper down to protect my work surface, I can now seal the bases with my mixture. I'll grab a paintbrush and remember to use an old or inexpensive paintbrush for this as the mixture will wreck your brushes. I'll just paint the mixture onto my base, making sure to get it all over it. I don't worry if any stones fall off the base when I'm doing this, as it just means that they weren't properly adhered to the base and better falling off now than when I'm painting or even worse when I'm gaming with the model. That's the first base done. I'll leave it to dry and get on with coating the other one. With the sealing mixture dry, I'm now ready to start painting my rough grime models. I'll start by painting the stones and rock faces with a base coat of this neutral grey acrylic paint. I have some paint in the palette, thinned down with a little bit of water. So I'll grab my paintbrush and start painting all the stones and rock faces. That's the base coat added, I'll just leave this all to dry. Now I'm going to paint the base coat onto the rest of the base and for that I'm going to use some burnt umber acrylic paint. With the paint in my palette I'll add some water to thin it and I'll start painting the brown onto the base. I'm painting around the stones and the rock faces but I'm not too worried if I get any brown paint onto them as I'll just add some dirt to them. I'm also going to be painting the edges of the bases as well. With all the 
your base coat's now dry, it's time to start dry brushing the models. And I'll start dry brushing the stones with these two lighter shades of grey. Grabbing a flat paintbrush, I'll start with the darker shade of grey and give all the stones and rock faces a heavy dry brush. If you've never done any dry brushing before, you can view my tutorial on it right here. worry about getting any of the grey paints onto the brown as I can easily fix that later on when I'm dry brushing the rest of the model. Now I'll take a smaller brush and I'm going to lightly dry brush the stones and the rock faces with a lighter shade of grey just to pick up the highlights. And that's all the stones painted. With all the stones and rock faces painted, I'm now ready to paint the rest of the model. And for that, I'm going to dry brush the brown with some yellow ochre, followed by some buff titanium acrylic paints. With some paint in my palette, I'll take a small flat head paintbrush and carefully dry brush the areas of the model where I've base coated brown. Try not to get too much paint onto the areas where I've already painted. Although, I'm not worried if I do get a little bit of paint on the stones, as it'll help add dirt to them. With the yellow ochre dry, I can now lightly dry brush the buff titanium with a small paintbrush. With all the painting now completed, here are my areas of rough ground and they are looking good and I could start gaming with them right now. However, I'm going to add some flock to my models to represent grass. And on this piece, I'm going to glue on some grass tufts to represent larger vegetation. And for that, I'm going to use these ready-made tufts that you can buy in any good gaming shop or model store. But first, I'm going to add the flock to my bases. I'll grab my PVA glue and a paintbrush, then paint the glue onto the base in the areas where I want the grass to be. When making your own rough ground models, you can decide how much glue you want to add, depending on how much or little flock you want to add. I'm going to add a fair amount of flock to my models. Then, I'm going to add some mid-green fine turf flock. With the glue added, I'll set the models down, sprinkle the flock over the top of them, making sure to cover the areas where I applied the glue. I can also use the flock to cover up any areas I may have messed up when I was painting them. I'll quickly tap off the excess flock so I can show you the model and that is looking great. But I'll just leave it to dry completely before removing the excess flock. And then for this base I'm going to add some flock and these grass tufts. So I'll start by painting PVA glue onto the areas where I wish the flock and tufts to be. With the glue added I'll grab some tweezers, pluck off some of the grass tufts from the strip, add a little glue to the bottom of the tuft place them onto the base and then press them onto the base with some tweezers. With the tufts added, I'll get my container of flock and gently sprinkle it all over the base, making sure to cover the areas where I've applied the glue. I'll quickly tap off the excess flock and that is looking nice. But I'll leave it to dry completely before removing the excess flock, especially these bits in my tufts. Here are my completed areas of rough ground and they are looking great and will look even better on the tabletop. So, Again, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and have learned different techniques on how to make some rough ground for your tabletop games. It'd be great if you give this video a like or a share and remember to subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Also, check out my website at thtrain.com where you can see more of my work. You can contact me in the comment section below or through my social media links in the description. And again, thank you very much for watching.